difficult to discuss with them his difficulties when you actually don't know what you're dealing with yourself it can be quite upsetting sometimes. It is difficult to say that we're doing it to our full potential because we feel that we're always up against it with our waiting lists and the pressure. The frustrations, on the other hand, are my job's very um, subjective. There aren't any really clear um, ways of diagnosing many of the conditions we see, and ADHD is one of those conditions. Consultations would be very difficult because parents would are seeing the features, but clinicians are not able to come to that conclusion. It's four and a half years of, of no diagnosis, of, of labelling, you know, in school with friends. Often people talk about it being an excuse, but finally they've got an explanation as to why that child's behaving in that way. long time to diagnose or, or to exclude ADHD before we had the QB testing. Since we've had the QB test, I can often draw a diagnostic conclusion on the first appointment. If you are saving admin time, the, the to and fro letters time, the school nurse observation time, so quite a lot of time of other professionals as well. Previously it was all a subjective thing on what the consultant felt was right. Well finally they've got a uh, report from the QB that they can show to the parents. And sometimes the most demanding parent has been humbled by it and felt, well, you know, they couldn't question it, they will not be coming back for reassessment or second opinions. You can actually do the job that you're here to do and that gives you much more sort of job satisfaction. It was such a relief for parents, clinicians, everyone, that they could actually move on and actually treat this child. Huge relief that I wasn't going mad and that somebody, you know, my son would finally get some support that he deserves. And I always said it was quite significant and that's exactly what the results showed. The setup's really simple. You just need a quiet room that's got minimal distractions. You've got to be able to obviously get the right distance between the computer and the chair and, and have enough room for observers to sit in the room. But even if there are distractions, it doesn't matter because if we phone QB Tech, they, they can take that bit out. So they're very supportive. QB Tech um, is a company that's wholly focused on ADHD. All the employees are really passionate about improving the lives of people with ADHD. The East Midlands Academic Health Science Network is all about bringing um, industry partners and the NHS um, together to spread innovations. We came across the Clark trial, which was looking specifically at the reduction of time to diagnosis of ADHD. What we then wanted to do was to take that trial and implement it in the real world with the aim to prove whether it was viable and to prove whether it was spreadable. The innovation itself is really easy to spread and I think that's one of the main reasons why we won the Health Service Journal Awards for Best Innovation in Mental Health. I think the next steps for us are to ensure that we can continue to spread the innovation to as many places as possible across England so as many children and families can benefit from the innovation. Different size trusts can operate in different models. You can run it on that smaller scale and if you find it's been successful, then you can increase that and uh, QB would flex the licence fees accordingly. Training has been um, readily available from QB Tech. It's very reliable, uh, we've never had anything go wrong with it. So the trusts have to look at only their local logistical implications, uh, where the initial teething issues they don't have to worry about. We're now quite stable on, on nail bands and he's doing really well.